uh, next is uh, V25, Lord G. I. Bleed. A 70 year old gentleman arrived in ED in shock after a couple of large PR bleeds. How would you manage him? So, I will approach the patient with ABCD approach. I will resuscitate the patient, check it airway, high flow oxygen, two large bowl IV access, take blood, full blood count, group and save, and cross match, collection studies. In warm one liter Hartman solution inside unit catheter. Then I will examine the patient abdomen tenderness and signs of shock. Assess the severity of the bleeding. Perform PR. Ask about drug, past medical history, and allergies, and review old notes. Then once her one liter Hartman is gone, I will review him in next thirty to sixty minutes. And estimate the degree of loss. If it's less than two hundred uh, uh, ml loss, no effect on heart or blood pressure. If eight hundred ml blood loss, he might be. Uh, he will drop 10 mm in blood pressure and 10 beats will increase in the heart rate. If it is 1.5 liters, could increase the shock. Um, if there is evidence of ongoing aggressive bleeding, I would transfuse 2 units to maintain the blood pressure and ask for an anesthetic opinion to consider the HDU care. Evidence of ongoing aggressive bleeding, then we should give the blood. If there was a coagulopathy, INR more than 1.5 or thrombocytopenia less than 50,000, I would take to the hematologist. I will talk to the hematologist on call about whether the patient needs bariplex, FFPs, platelets or vitamin K. So which patients are at risk of developing a lower GI bleed? So patient taking <clears throat> aspirin, NSAIDs, anticoagulants coagulants like warfarin, history of previous rectal bleed, pelvic irradiation, chronoscopy or polypectomy in the last two weeks, patient with liver cirrhosis, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease and symptoms suggestive of colorectal cancer, and patient with known hemorrhoids or diverticulosis, of patient with a fresh PR bleed, 11% have massive upper GI bleed and 80-85% to stop spontaneously, overall mortality is 2-4%. to What are the causes of lower GI bleed? So most common cause is diverticular bleed, 17-40%. to it's acute, painless, arterial in nature, occur at the dome or neck of the vertical stops spontaneously in 80%, 20% debilitated in 4 years. Number 2, angiodysplasia, majority in the right colon, often multiple, bleed due to coagulopathy, red circumscribed mucosal lesions. Number 3, colitis, could be ischemic, could be inflammatory bowel disease or chronic or radiation induced. So, sudden, often temporary reduction in mesenteric flow resulting from episode of low blood pressure vasospasm occurs at watershed areas of the colon that Smith Griffiths point, splenic flexure, and the rectus might junction and mainly affect the elderly with atherosclerosis. Incolitis usually present in the abdominal pain followed by PR bleed, bloody diarrhea, usually self limiting but has uh, increased risk of mortality. Number four, neoplasia and post polypectomy bleeds 11 to 14%. Delayed bleeding can occur up to two weeks post procedure. Anorectal disease, hemorrhoids, and rectal varices 4 to 10 percent. Upper GI bleed and small bowel bleeding. So, again, let's repeat to seven diverticular bleed, angiodysplasia, colitis, neoplasia, neoplasia, anorectal bleed, upper GI bleed, and small bowel bleed. Again, diverticular bleed, angiodysplasia, colitis, neoplasia, anorectal bleed, upper GI bleed, and small bowel bleed. The patient stabilizes after two minutes of blood and his blood pressure returned to normal although he continues to pass a small amount of fresh PR bleed. What do you do? So consider an urgent endoscopy provided colonoscopy uh, provided the patient remains stable. Current recommendation advice giving bowel prep in acute lower GI bleed as it improves the diagnostic yield and decreases the risk of perforation. Bleeding lesions can be injected, coagulated, clipped or band ligated. Two modalities should be utilized. Often difficult to visualize the specific bleeding point at colonoscopy in acute lower GI bleed. The patient has another large PR bleed on the ward and became hypertensive. He needs for another two units of blood to stabilize him. What would you do now? This patient has now become unstable and requires urgent intervention. Arrange mesenteric or CT angiogram, which can detect bleeding at rate of 0 0.5 to 1 mil and 70% specific with 47% sensitivity in the acute setting. There is the possibility of controlling the bleeding with an endovascular coil or immobilization and to identify the bleeding point if the patient needed surgery. When would you operate on a patient with massive bleed? What would you do in theater? So surgery is the last resort only in unstable patients with feminine bleeding or recurrent bleeding without localization of the bleeding source. Either CT angiogram or selective mesenteric angiogram should be performed in an attempt to localize plus minus control the bleeding site. 
In the resuscitated stable patient, capsule endoscopy can be performed to rule out the bleeding from the small intestine. I would first do an OGD to rule out upper GI bleed and then I will do proctoscopy to rule out uh, hemorrhoidal bleeding. Blind segmental um, colectomy is associated with unacceptably high rates of morbidity um, and mortality up to 50%. I would attempt intraoperative colonoscopy using the appendix to wash out the colon and to localize the bleeding source and hope to identify a bleeding point if this were negative. I would attempt small bowel enteroscopy. Bleeding can come from small bowel and directed segmental resection is has low morbidity, mortality and re-bleeding. What risk factors predict a severe course or re-bleed? Heart rate more than 100 beats, blood pressure less than 115, second PR bleed within 4 hours of admission and more than 2 active comedy in aspirin. Thank you.